Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is solving. Well, let's see if this pen is going to work. Solving. Uh, let me use a darker pen. Solving polynomial equations with complex answers. All right, you ready? Complex, complex answers. So when we talk about complex numbers, complex numbers have I's in them, okay? Now, so a complex number is going to have a real with an imaginary, okay? Complex numbers are real with an imaginary. An imaginary number is just an I, right? So an imaginary number, so the square root of negative 1, we know is equal to I. And they do come in pairs, right? So if I had x squared plus 1 equals 0, and you had to solve for x, go minus 1, minus 1, you got x squared equals negative 1, square root, square root, right? We know the square root of negative 1 is I, but we get two answers because of the x squared. So we get x equals plus or minus I, okay? They come in pairs. They always will, okay? If you get one I, you're going to have a second I. They always come in pairs, okay? Now, a complex number is going to be a real plus or minus an imaginary. So you'd have, for instance, an A plus or minus a b i, okay? A is a real number, any number. So as an example, maybe it'd have a 2 plus or minus 3 i, okay? That's an example of a complex number, okay? Yeah, Daisy? Is e an Great question. E is a real number. E is a real number like pi. It's an irrational number, though. Does that make sense? To be irrational is a number that goes on forever and ever but never repeats. Can't be a fraction. Good question. So now, let's take a look at example one. Everybody thumbs up so far? Wait, actually. Yeah. Gavin. Was it set in the circle? Here. That's his example. That's his example, yeah. This is, so, Gavin, this is an example of a complex number. This would be an example of a complex number. It has a real number. has a real number with uh, an imaginary. Does that make sense? So it's all, it's all, it's got a complex life. I mean, it's like a real person hanging out with an imaginary person. All right, that, that'd be a complex life, wouldn't it? Yep. I know, it sounds like some of your relationships, huh? A real person hanging out with, a com with an imaginary person. <laughs> that'd be pretty sad. Sounds like some of my relationships. <laughs> I did not say that. Anyway, yeah. Okay, example one, let's solve, okay? So, so will it factor? Solve. It won't factor, right? So let's just solve it. X squared, so we'll go plus 8 plus 8. X squared equals 8. Now, that's not a negative 8, correct? That's just a positive 8. Square root, square root. How many answers? How many answers? Two. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8, which is an okay, okay answer. I like better that we take the plus or minus the square root of 8. I would take this on a test. I would, but it would be better to write it as square root of 4, square root of 2, right? Because 4 times 2 is 8, and that would break down to 2, so a better answer would be plus or minus 2 squared to 2, okay? Great question. Um, let me back you up to an easy one, okay? Really good question. Let's take x squared minus 4 equals 0, okay? Let's just take this one, okay? Daisy, one answer is 2. Plug it in, okay? 2 squared is 4. Mm -hmm. 4 minus 4 is 0. So 2's got to be an answer because it makes it equal to 0. What about negative 2? Plugged in negative 2, what's negative 2 squared? So both answers work, don't they? So when you have a square, the reason you get the plus or minus is because when you plug in the negative, it's going to square and make it a positive, right? Great question. Okay, how about example 2? So example 2 is very similar, except for it does not factor. So let's go minus 4, minus 4 x squared equals negative 4, right? Square root, square root. Two answers, right? So I've got x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Now, I'm going to show the i, because I'm the teacher, and if you already jumped to 2i, awesome. But the reason we get 2i is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4 and the square root of 
negative 1. Because 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Agree? Mm -hmm. Square root of 4 is 2. So plus or minus 2 and the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay. What if it's like an odd number that doesn't have a square root? Yeah, and then we'll leave it as like the square root of 8 or square root of 3, right? i. Okay, we're going to see that too, okay? Uh, now, in fact, that was Ashley's question. Ashley, you asked that exact question about 10 minutes ago. So what about a plus minus square root of 3i? Okay, now think about this, Daisy, real quickly, because this is your question. If I plug in a negative 2i, okay, if I go a negative 2i squared plus 4, I'd get a positive 4i squared. And i squared is negative 1. Do you remember that? So I get 4 times negative 1 plus 4 is 0. So that's why both of these answers work. If you plug in 2i, it'll make it 0. If you plug in negative 2i, it will make it 0, OK? All right? OK, next one. Example 4. Example 3. Sorry, my bad. Example 3. So let's solve it. Minus 4 minus 4. x minus 2 squared equals negative 4, right? Square root, square root. Two answers, so I've got an x minus 2 because the square root cancels the square, and I'm going to get a plus or minus 2i. You okay with that? Because I just did that work up here, okay? You guys agree with plus or minus 2i? You bet. Now, this is a, an imaginary number. I'm going to add 2 on my next step. I'm going to add 2, but when you add, you cannot add reals with imaginary, right? So I'm going to go plus 2, plus 2, and you get an answer of x equals 2 plus or minus 2i. And you have to keep them separate. That's a real number, and that's an imaginary, OK? So it's it is a complex number. Very good. So it is. The, yeah, it has to be in front of it. Um, and it is a positive 2, because I added 2, added 2. So really, another really good question. So complex numbers always have to be in this form, always. Now, if you don't put it in this form, I would never mark it wrong. But so. They're supposed to be the real first plus or minus the i. If you had it backwards, I would not mark it wrong. But math etiquette says put the real plus or minus the i. Okay, good question. Okay, ready to turn the page? Does this seem pretty okay so far? All right, now we know the quadratic formula, right? Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, write that down. Now, a, B's, and C's are the numbers, not the X's. The A, B's, and C's are the numbers, not the X's. Don't be plugging in any stinking X's, okay? A is a 1, B is a 2, and C is the 5. What we're going to find, what we're finding is the answer to the X's. Does that make sense? We're going to get x equals, x equals. We're finding the answers, OK? So it's really x equals negative b plus my square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we also know there's two answers. That's why you got the plus or minus. We know there's two answers. That's why you have the plus or minus, OK? So you go to x squared. Yeah, two answers. Put an equal 0 on this. I forgot to do that. Darn it. One more thing I have to change, OK? Put an equal 0. So let's solve it. So. A is 1, B is 2, C is 5. You ready? Negative B, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 2 squared. And Daisy, I'm going to show every step, because you're already going to do half of this in your head, aren't you? Minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A, right? Just plug them in. A is 1, B is 2, C is 5. Okay, let's simplify that. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of a 4 minus 20 all over 2, right? I'm going to have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of a negative 16 all over 2, right? So I'm going to have an I. I'm going to have an I answer. So my answer is going to be a Bring it up here, a negative 2 plus or minus 4i over 2. OK, how am I doing? So I'm going to answer your question again. It's supposed to be real plus imaginary. So I'm going to have a negative 1 plus or minus 
2i. So I've got, I have them separated. See they're separated? I've got my negative 1 plus minus 2i. Okay, and they are separated. Hi, Lori. Yes. I just need to okay, now, example 5. There are three answers. Okay, so if I were to do this, and I'm going to just do this real quickly. Okay, if I were to do this and go minus 8, minus 8, x cubed equals negative 8, cube root. Uh, x cubed equals cube root of negative 8, I would get x equals negative 2, okay? And that is one answer. That is going to be one answer. x equals negative 2 is one answer, right? But there's two others. And the only way we're going to get the other two is by factoring. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's get the other answers by actually factoring, okay? All right, now, if I were to factor this, I'm going to rewrite it as an x cubed plus a 2 cubed, right? I'm going to use this formula. So a is x and b is 2, right? <coughs> so let's put it in our formula. We're going to go x plus b. So x plus 2, right? Times a squared or x squared minus a b, which is going to be minus a 2x plus a b squared, so plus 4, equals 0. Okay. Now, one answer is easy, right? One answer is easy. x plus 2 equals 0. x equals negative 2. Okay, I already knew that one, but there it is, right? I already knew that one. That was easy. Okay, now the second one is going to take the quadratic form. This will not factor. Multiples of 4 are not going to make a negative 2, right? So we're going to need the quadratic form formula, which luckily we have right up here, right? There's my quadratic formula again, okay? And we know that in this case, A is 1, B is negative 2, and C is 4, right? So let's just do the work. Negative B or negative negative 2 is a 2, plus or minus the square root. Now be careful on this. Be careful on this. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4, right? Negative 2 squared is a positive 4, not a negative 4. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 4, all over 2 times A, which is 1. Okay, how am I doing? Okay. Then I'm going to go 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 16 over 2. Two plus or minus the square root of a negative twelve over two. So I'm going to have an imaginary answer. I'm going to have a, a complex number, right? Yes. Okay. How am I doing? Am I going too fast? I'm okay. So let me do a little work on the side, so I have room. Okay. So the square root of a negative twelve. Little side work. Square root of four. Square root of three. Square root of negative one. Okay. Right. A little side work on the on the side because I want to I want to rewrite the negative twelve in a different version. So I'm going to get two. Square root of 3, i. Okay, now, I like the i on the end. A lot of books like it in the middle. I prefer this. A lot of books prefer this. To me, it seems wrong to put it like this because we know it should be the number and then i, right? Standard form. That's why I like it like this. But you will see it in some books where the i is before the square root. Okay, so let's put that down. I've got a 2 plus or minus the square root of 3, whoops, I'm sorry, 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3, that's what I used. 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3, i all over 2, okay? And then if I reduce this, I'm going to have an answer of 1 plus or minus 1 square root of 3, i. And I, you're right, I don't need this 1, but I put it in there for you anyway, okay? So here's my 1, 2 over 2. And here's my other one, 2 over 2. Square root of 3i, okay? Can you do that? Okay. You won't whine and complain and say this is too hard, Dad? You said over